Welcome everyone to the Ginkgo Street webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about Civi Volunteer Tips and Tricks. We may have a few folks uh, trickling in, so uh, we're going to start with an introduction. My name is Roshni Patari. I'm the Director of Strategy and Engagement at Ginkgo Street Lab. And I'm joined by Frank Gomez, who is a Civi CRM developer and principal at Ginkgo Street Lab. So just a little bit of information about Ginkgo Street. Uh, we focus on providing and helping uh, nonprofits with Civi CRM maintenance and support. So we make it easy for groups to get started with Civi CRM. We also help them with upgrading. So a lot of groups are using older versions of Civi CRM and uh, we can help them to upgrade to 4.5 so they can take advantage of the latest features of Civi CRM. And we also help them with customization. So if there are tricky things that you would like to be able to do in Civi CRM that you're not able to do right out of the box, we can help you with that. So just a little bit of background about uh, Civi CRM. A lot of folks on the webinar are already familiar with Civi CRM and using Civi CRM. And I think there are a few folks who are new to Civi CRM. So it was founded in 2004, and the founders had a lot of experience working with nonprofits and technology. Um, it's grounded in open source, so there are no license costs or user fees uh, with installing or downloading the software. This is definitely one of the biggest advantages of Civi CRM compared to a lot of the CRM tools out there that are proprietary. Uh, it's built for nonprofits, which is great. Uh, some of the tools that you may be familiar with in the marketplace are built for for-profits and corporations. So because Civi CRM is built for nonprofits, it's really tailored to the processes of nonprofit organizations from memberships to donations to events. Um, and it's also being nurtured and constantly being improved by a community of developers and users. And that's one of the biggest benefits uh, of using Civi CRM because you can take advantage of the new development that folks are doing around the world. Uh, so the folks who are already using Civi CRM probably already know that there is a lot you can do with it. Instead of using different tools for managing your events, another tool for managing your email list, uh, you can do everything within an integrated platform. Um, so you can manage uh, memberships with Civi Member, uh, volunteers with Civi Volunteer. We're going to be going into more detail about that. Um, and it really helps to give you a 360-degree view of how um, people are engaging with your organization. So are they giving you a donation? Uh, are they participating in a campaign? And then which events have they, have they been to? You can also segment your communication based on how people are engaging with you. So that's a great benefit of Civic CRM. So the topic for today is uh, Civi Volunteer. And we wanted to take a step back and talk a little bit about volunteering and the importance of volunteering. We have some of these stats uh, from the National and Community Service uh, Corporation, which focuses on how important volunteering is uh, in America. I know we have folks from around the world joining us today. So it it's varies from country to country, but in the U.S., over 62.6 .6 million folks volunteered, and the estimated value is over 173 billion. So volunteers have a huge impact, and especially when it comes to nonprofit organizations, they contribute um, quite a bit in terms of their time and energy to making organizations succeed. At that point, um, volunteer management uh, also makes for better organizational management. There have been some studies, and I, unfortunately I, I don't have a slide or, or stats with me, but it's been fairly well documented that um, organizations that develop the infrastructure and the processes to manage volunteers are shown to be more effective at meeting their goals. And I think that has a lot to do with um, developing those processes and um, 
just learning how to manage people because uh, volunteers and staff are certainly different, but there's a lot of there's a lot of similarities. Um, so if you can master managing your volunteers, um, you can really make your whole organization much more effective. So kind of building upon uh, what Frank just said, um, we found that, as you can see with this statistic, you know, over 79.2% of volunteers also donate to organizations. So if you think about the ladder of engagement, so folks start out as volunteers, but then they end up as donors to your organization. In fact, they're more likely to give to your organization than non-volunteers. Um, non so twice as likely, actually, to donate to your organizations and non-volunteers. We want to look at this not only just from a technical perspective, but also look at it from an overall perspective of volunteer management. So what does it take to manage a volunteer program. So we have the five steps that were put together in the points of light training that you can actually take online. Uh, so you need to start with planning a volunteer program. Next is recruiting and placing volunteers, uh, orienting and training volunteers and staff. Uh, then you can move on to supervising and recognizing volunteer for the work that they've been doing. And finally, evaluating the volunteer program to see how it can be improved. So these are great five steps um, in terms of starting and evaluating a, a program. So we're going to work with these as we go through how to be volunteer kind of plays a role in these five steps. So let's start with uh, planning a volunteer program. Uh, it's critical for an organization to really think about where does the volunteer program fit into their organization structure. So for example, uh, during the holiday season, are you going to need more volunteers for a particular event that you are doing? Or do you need volunteers on an ongoing basis for specific departments? So it's really important to identify and figure out where the volunteer program is going to fit. Uh, the next is defining the activities the volunteers will be doing. Are they ongoing activities, for example, Let's say if you have an intern for a few months, they're going to be helping you with your fundraising uh, in your fundraising department, or is it going to be um, more of a discrete activity at a particular event? So it's really important and helpful to define the activities. Um, next is you need to really define the roles, and this kind of goes along with the activities. So come up with a job description for the volunteers, what are the qualifications that are required, the skills that they need, and also time commitment. This is really going to help you to, when you're recruiting volunteers, to find the right folks. Um, management, so you need to define a little bit about who will be managing, supervising, and training the volunteers. It might be that we have people from different departments that will be contributing to this management and the training process. And finally, looking at the schedule. So are there certain times of year that you're going to need volunteers more? And uh, coming up with a, a yearly schedule for that. And uh, I think at this point we can go ahead and, and show um, some of how, oh, look at that. There are a bunch of questions in here. Um, I was gonna, I was going to mention a point of process. We're going to um, periodically check the question queue here to see um, if folks have questions about anything, unfortunately, while I'm sharing my screen, um, I, I can't see uh, the questions. So uh, in between slides, uh, I'll pop over and, and see if there are any questions here. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at how we would do some of those things in City Volunteer. Let's see what those questions are first. All is locked, it says. Okay. The conference is now unlocked. Okay. Uh, can folks hear now? Was was everybody getting uh, no audio? 
if, um, if there's been any change with your audio issues. Okay, can hear now. I can hear. Um, well, uh, what do you, uh, should we backtrack a little bit um, or should we just uh, keep moving forward and uh, take a look at the, at the software here? I'll, I'll wait for some answers to come in. Keep moving, I hear. Let's look at the software I hear. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Um, Right, so uh, the first thing, let's see, where do I want to jump in here? Uh, in City Volunteer, uh, volunteer projects are presently handled in the context of um, Civi CRM events. Um, and uh, there's some folks who are very happy about that, and there's some folks who would like to see more use cases for Civi Volunteer. I think. Um, it's fairly flexible um, as is. Uh, there are definitely more use cases I'd like to see, but I think we can uh, talk about some workarounds for using CivCRM towards the end if, um, if it's not working for you the way it's designed. So um, I've set up a volunteer project here for this Rainforest Soccer Youth Tournament. And uh, City Volunteer adds this uh, a few fields here to um, to the event screen, so uh, you can enable or disable volunteer management, and then you can also select the beneficiary um, who you would like to um, recognize uh, for the volunteering. Uh, so this might work a couple different ways. You might have, uh, different chapters. Mm -hmm. You might have different chapters um, and you need to track hours for them separately or um, there might be other arrangements. But this is uh, maybe not too different, but soft credit um, in contribution speak. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, where we left off in the slideshow was about identifying volunteer needs. Um, so let's start there, uh, defining volunteer needs. So uh, we have this soccer tournament and we need um, some people to staff it. Um, so maybe we need um, you know, 10 people to uh, take folks tickets or money at the door and um, 7 a.m. is pretty early for a soccer game. So let's make that 10 a.m. and um, the shift is an hour long and um, maybe we want, um, so none of these other roles really make sense for us. So let's go ahead and define some new roles. And uh, there's a shortcut to that here. Um, so we can add a new volunteer role here. And let's say we need um, referees for our soccer game. And um, you could put a description in here. Um, City, City Volunteer isn't currently going to do anything with it, but we have heard from some folks who want um, descriptions for the volunteer roles. So uh, that might be something we add in the future. And if we just uh, refresh this here, uh, we have our referee and um, maybe we only have two games going on at a time. And I don't know how long a soccer game is. I'll just say two hours. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so with that, I think um, let's jump back to the presentation. Um, this is just a high level, and let's see if there are any questions. Yeah, there's some more questions here. Um, okay, how are volunteer roles different from city event roles? Uh, so they are totally unrelated. Um, they are similar in that um, they're architecturally the information is managed in the same way. If you've gotten under the hood of city CRM at all, you might have seen um, the, the, the uh, concept of option groups. I can show you. Um, Right, so you might have you might have messed around with some of these before. Um, if you have uh, various gender options, or you have other types of lists, and so uh, both event types and volunteer role or uh, roles for for both volunteers and events are managed as option groups, but they're separate option groups. Okay, um, so I'm going to jump back to the slideshow. Oh, one more question just came in. Call control mute attendees. I don't um I don't have a button for that, Roshni, but if uh if folks could just mute their microphone, um that might help with uh cut, cutting down on some of that background noise. Mute line. Okay, I'm gonna try that and let me know if you, you are now muted. Me. So I've, I've done mute line. Can you still hear my voice? Perfect. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties, folks. Um, OK, so there's a follow-up question about why the roles are different. Um, the reason is that they can they can be very different. Um, they what your volunteers uh, how they interact with um, with your organization really has little to do with um, with the event workflow where you have participants and, and maybe speakers. Um, there are a lot of cases where there will be some overlap, but um, I. Don't think it's appropriate to assume that there's always going to be a 100% overlap there. Um, so I'll just jump back to the presentation here, and if uh, if there are more questions, we'll um, hop back to them um, when we come back after this next slide. Thanks so much, Frank. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. And uh, we will be sharing these slides with you all. So if you all didn't hear the first part of the presentation, it's okay. You didn't miss too much. Um, so I want to move on to recruiting and placing volunteers. So it's really helpful to define your audiences, uh, what types of volunteers you're looking for, their interests, um, and figure out where are they hanging out so you can see how you can promote um, your volunteer positions. Uh, and then define and implement your marketing strategies so to make sure that you get the right people in terms of volunteers. Uh, make it very easy for people to apply for the position and have a process in place so people are getting feedback in terms of that they receive your you received their application and when you're going to be follow, following up with them. And define how you're going to be selecting volunteers and a follow up process as well. Okay. Um, so uh, for managing the outreach of your events um, or your volunteer projects, uh, I want to stress that Civi Volunteer isn't the answer to everything. Um, or rather that uh, don't forget about the great functionality that Civi CRM already has. Um, so. Uh, for folks who, who aren't familiar uh, with it, 
Um, always happens in a demo. No, I haven't configured my default mailbox. Uh, for folks who aren't uh, familiar with it, uh, Civi CRM has a great mess email tool. And you can use that um, to segment your list based on um, activities that people have had have performed in the past or um, interests that, that they've expressed. Um, and you can set up mail templates too. So if you have the same messages going out over and over again, um, you don't have to kind of type those up every time. Um, and if you have a, a page on um, your website where you list your volunteer opportunities, um, you know, that can be part of your message template. Um, and so part of this process is, is knowing who, um, who your constituents are, what their interests are, uh, and what they're good at. And so the demo that I'm showing you is actually running uh, the pre-release version of City Volunteer 1.4. The, the, the stable version um, is, is 1.3. So I'm going to be showing you a few things um, that aren't um, probably aren't in the version that you're running, but um, City Volunteer is built on all of the core technologies of uh, City CRM. We tried not to invent anything new. We tried as much as possible to just repackage things to make them a little more useful. Um, so Civi Volunteer 1.4 is going to ship with um, a form that you can use to collect uh, general inquiries or general interest of people um, who aren't interested in, or, or, or maybe don't know about any of your particular opportunities, um, but who might want to sign up and tell you, um, you know, I'm interested in, and available to volunteer. Um, and so what you're seeing here is just a basic uh, CVCRM profile. And um, if you haven't played around with profiles at all, you can find that under Administer Customized Data and Screens Profiles. I'll just go ahead and pop that open and we'll take a, a quick look at it. So um, CV Volunteer creates a, a, a new reserve profile called Notify Me of Volunteer Opportunities. And um, the nice thing about using existing technologies within CV CRM um, is that that allows this to be extensible. So if, um, if you don't really care to have people's phone numbers, you can remove this field um, from your form. And the other thing that you're seeing that maybe you haven't seen before is uh, this little slider widget. Um, some of the folks who are funding uh, the next level of uh, CV volunteer development are interested in, in, under, in measuring skill levels of, of people uh, who are interested in, in participating with them. So the camera skill level is just an example field here. And um, you can see when I drag the slider, the uh, level of interest or skill um, changes. And um, what this is doing is it's, it's a fancy widget to um, facilitate a, a multi-select. So if I have... Um, a volunteer opportunity that is appropriate for, um, let's say, someone with apprentice level. Uh, but I have volunteers who have uh, expressed that they're masters at uh, operating a camera. Um, those masters are qualified to do, um, you know, the medium level tasks. And so, by specifying master, um, they have also selected the lower level. Uh, which will make it easy to identify them in a search. Um, in addition to that, um, when you um, when you create a volunteer opportunity, um, a sign up form for that opportunity is created. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh this here. And um, 
So you can see on this particular form, I chose not to use the widget. So um, these are the options um, that you saw rendered differently. Uh, but what we can do here is we can have people tell us um, what they want to volunteer for. Um, so you can match them up to their particular interests. So um, I might want to be a referee, and if I have multiple referee um, shifts available, that would show up here. Um, or sometimes um, you just want people to sign up, and uh, you don't really care about um, what they're doing, just that you have um, you know, bodies, you have, you have people. And so if I, if I wanted to do that and I still wanted to assign roles on the back end, I could uncheck these public boxes here. And um, when I refresh this form, uh, I'm no longer asking people the question. And then I can go ahead and fill this out. And um, that's not my phone number. Um, and you get the nice little volunteer confirmation, and um, that moves us along to uh, actually assigning the volunteers. Um, and so I, can, I, I still have those roles that I set up, those shifts. I can still choose um, to make myself a referee or a ticket taker. Um, So you, you have kind of a lot of flexibility here. And that might be useful if you have um, some roles that you want to have public uh, and others that you don't. So maybe if you, if you um, have like a, a DJ or something um, or, or an MC, um, like a local celebrity, you might not want people offering to MC your event, um, but you might want to still you know, manage uh, schedules using the tool here. Um, so I've gone on a little bit longer than I meant to. Let me jump back to the presentation. First, let's see if uh, there are any new questions here. Um, okay, there are a few questions. How are the qualifications defined and what is the measurement range? Um, so what I've done here is Um, right, so uh, this is also new in 1.4. Uh, there's a subtype now, a subcontact type of volunteer. And uh, one of the main reasons we did that is uh, you, you may want to collect skill levels um, for different people uh, in your organization, but you probably don't want those skills showing up on every single contact in your database. Um, so. Uh, and certainly not for, um, you know, organizations aren't going to have camera skill levels and uh, there are certain types of individuals who I'm just not interested in that information about them. So uh, the volunteer uh, subtype will help uh, keep that separate. And um, you can turn the widget on and off um, using this checkbox uh, that is that City Volunteer adds to the custom field UI. And um, there is a, a help box here, um, which is probably too small for folks to read. Um, but it kind of explains what you're doing. And the multiple choice options here um, are totally up to you, um, what you want to call the different levels. What's important is that you order them in order from um, least to most. So your expert should be, um, and the value is actually irrelevant too, it's, it's the order that matters. Um, so the, the, the highest level of, of skill should be at the bottom, and the lowest level of skill should be at the top. Um, what you call them is, is arbitrary. Um, and, and again, that won't, be available until CV1, uh, CV Volunteer 1.4 um, is released. So there's a question about how to view the public form. Um, 
And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you go to the event link and hit event info, um, now in addition to the register now button, there is a volunteer now button. Um, and that will take you to the public forum. Let me just clean up some of these tabs here. And is there a way to import an existing list into the volunteer list? Okay. Uh, so if I understand that question correctly, uh, whoops, that's not the interface I want. The question is, is there a way to import people um, into this, this list here on the side, the available volunteers? Um, we are looking at uh, having a way to um, have arbitrary lists show up um, so that you don't have, so now in order to have someone show up in this list, you basically need to create um, an activity for them. Um, which, just to get at the architecture of this a little bit more, um, when somebody, well, let's just look at my record. So when I filled out that form, um, I created a new activity for myself. And it's a, a volunteer type activity. and. Um, so the, the details show up here. Um, so you could populate that list um, by creating the appropriate type of uh, volunteer activity, but that's going to be um, either onerous or, or, or difficult. So uh, at, at this point, there isn't a great way to do that. I think we may have a first pass at making that a little bit easier in the next release of City 1.4. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be um, the end of this conversation, though. Um, oh, questions keep coming. Um, yes, OK. Uh, so there's a question here about the volunteer permission. Um, we didn't want to assume too much about who would be using um, Civi Volunteer or what their volunteer workflow is. And Civi CRM defines um, a whole bunch of permissions for just about everything um, you can think of. Uh, where are the permissions? I think it's under people. Yeah. So um, this is a this is Drupal. Um, Civi Volunteer works in um, all of the C uh, CMSs that are supported by Civi CRM. We didn't want to write a tool that was specific to Drupal or specific to WordPress or Joomla. Um, and so while there are some ways to do some things. Um, in the CMS, um, we really wanted something that would be useful to everyone. Um, so in, in the permissions, there's a new permission, register to volunteer. And um, so you can set that however you like. If anonymous um, users should be able to volunteer, then you just need to check, check this box and save it. Um, I'm not seeing a box on, on my screen, Roshni, sorry. How, how far out is release 1.4? Uh, I feel like we're getting really close. Um, I don't, not sure I'm ready to give a date because I'm sure we'll miss it. <laughs> uh, let, let's say very close. I, I would like to have it released next month. Um, okay, I think I've, um, too long here, so I'm going to hand it back over to Roshini. OK. 
Okay, so in terms of the next stage of the volunteer management process, once you have recruited the volunteers and they're ready to go, you need to figure out a plan for orientation and training. Um, so determining who will be managing the volunteers, we mentioned that earlier, and defining the expectations, creating a volunteer handbook um, may be helpful in scheduling an orientation uh, where you can onboard multiple volunteers at once. I mean, this is going to vary from organization to organization depending on what the volunteers are focusing on. Uh, but here are some tips in terms of some things you can include in the orientation process, defining expectations, creating a schedule, if there are specific skills that the volunteers need, uh, providing that training, um, introducing them to the staff where, where it uh, makes sense, and then going over the whole evaluation process so they know um, how their work will be evaluated over time. And definitely figuring out a way to show how valuable they are and the critical role that they're going to play in the organization. And finally, uh, coming up with a more of an ongoing training plan to see once that they've been oriented and onboarded, uh, if you're going to provide monthly trainings or brown bags um, for training and also sharing experiences amongst volunteers. And I just wanted to add on to that. Um, these are um, some of these processes can be handled right in CIVI CRM. Um, CIVI Event is a great tool to use to manage um, these these monthly trainings if, if that's the route that you go. Um, and you can even get really meta. And if you have volunteers helping you organize your volunteer trainings, you can use CIVI Event and CIVI Volunteer uh, together for that. Uh, the next, uh, once folks have been onboarded and oriented, then you have to figure out how are you going to track their, their time? How are the volunteers going to submit their time? And um, I think Frank is going, to, is going to talk a little bit about tracking time. Um, also, are you going to schedule regular check-ins with the volunteers to see how things are going, uh, what, help, what they need help with, and also follow-up training they need, and figuring out a way to recognize the best volunteer. So what are the criteria you'll use to you know, pick the best volunteers? How are you going to recognize their contributions and the impact that they're having on your work? Okay, so jumping, um, jumping back to uh, the software here, let me just answer Ellen's question really quick. Our volunteers are different for most events, so I need a way to print the description of the role to be visible to the assigned volunteer. Is this possible? Um, the answer is yes, that it's possible. Uh, it's not built into City Volunteer at present. Uh, it would not take um, a lot of code to make that happen. And if um, we'd be happy to help you with that, or if you have a developer in your team who can um, do that, a simple uh, API call um, should make it pretty easy to display that on the page. Um, we do like when, when people make contribution or improvements to City Volunteer for their own organizations for those to come back into the project um, so that other people can benefit from them as well. So if, um, if anyone is using City Volunteer and has added uh, more onto it, we'd really like to talk to you about um, you know, how we can share that with other people and also take the maintenance burden off of you. Um, anytime you make a customization, you own it unless you're sharing it with other people, uh, in which case you have a community supporting that. Um, okay, so on to uh, logging. We've um, talked a bit about the different kind of stages um, in volunteering here and um, kind of the wrap up at, at the end of any particular volunteer event or project is um, logging people's time. Um, and or logging whether they showed up or not. Um, 
So we have the status here. Um, we can mark someone as canceled. We can mark them as a no-show. Um, and uh, right now I'm, I'm marked as scheduled because uh, I'm sorry, as available because I'm not assigned to any particular task. I'm still in that I'm flexible no man's land. Um, but if someone is scheduled for a specific slot, they'll show up as scheduled. And um, now that I'm logging the hours, I want to go ahead and set the status to completed. And uh, yeah, let's go back actually and, and make this a little, a little bit better. Um, okay, so now I'm here and we can add volunteers on the fly here. So let's just add a few more. No Smith. What database doesn't have a Smith in it? Okay. And um, let's maybe drag. Right. Um, and you can see the counter at the bottom there telling you how many more people are needed to uh, meet the needs for any particular need here. So now that this is full, um, it doesn't, doesn't show red anymore. And when we go to log our hours, um, you'll see now that the status is scheduled and that the amount of time that the volunteer uh, committed themselves to shows up here. Um, I don't know if anyone's asking right now, but this happens, this question comes up every time. Um, duration is in minutes uh, because that's how Civi CRM core um, tracks time. Um, I would like to see an hours widget, but I don't want to diverge too much from what's happening in core. I think really the major holdup um, to having a little widget that does the, the math for you is um, translation and internationalization. Um, every culture that I'm familiar with uses um, hour colon minute minute. Um, but I understand that there are cultures that, that don't. And um, I don't think anyone has come up with a way yet to figure out um, the best way to represent that. Uh, anyway, um, so now we can, recur, uh, we can record um, how much time someone put in. So um, if, if here, here's a nice feature. You can click this little icon here and pre-fill all the way down. And we can also show um, that someone, uh, maybe Angelica here, didn't stay as long as she said we would. And um, Shad stayed for you know, considerably longer. And um, you might also be noticing um, these star icons that aren't in your version of City Volunteer. Um, and this is our kind of uh, commendation feature. Um, it's a, literally a way to give a gold star um, to a volunteer. Uh, and so this is a way um, to recognize volunteers. And you might use uh, gold stars to um, uh, kind of rank uh, volunteers. Um, so let's just say. Um, Chad stayed way longer than planned. Um, and for now, this is a positive feedback only um, system. Uh, I could be convinced that um, there should be a way to kind of uh, give folks a demerit, but um, no one.
Hello, can you all hear me? I think that uh, we may have... Okay, great. I'm glad you can hear me. Um, let me see if uh, if we can get Frank back in here. Just one second. Frank, if you want to say something, let's see if we can get you back here. Okay, let me let me go back and see if I can. Yeah, it looks like it is. The screen is frozen. I see um, Frank. Uh, I don't know if there's a way you can go ahead and log back in or call back in. And in the meantime, if you want to pull up the slides, I can uh, continue with the slides. We have about ten minutes left. So let me go ahead and um, Frank, if you can go ahead and just um, pull up the slides. And then I can continue. Okay, so we're going to get back into the, the slides and um, try to wrap it up. And in the meantime, Frank is going to see if he can if he can dial back in. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Uh, Frank, do you want to go ahead and pull up the slides? is working again. Um, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, and I'm restarting the screen share. Okay, great. Okay, it tells me I'm sharing my screen again. So sorry, yes. folks, about the technical difficulties here. I um, started, I don't know if that's snow or hail, um, here in DC, and I wonder if that kind of put a blip in my internet connection. Um, so I think there was a question. Um, can volunteers say I'm available every Tuesday evening or does it have to be on an instance by instance basis? Um, that's a feature we're going to also have a first pass at in um, CV Volunteer 1.4. Uh, it's not ready for me to show you yet, um, but uh, 
it's going to be, um, we didn't want to be trying to manage people's entire calendars or schedule because I think that's a little overkill. So it's going to be more general availability, like you say, like Tuesday evenings um, or weekends only um, rather than January 30th. Uh, because that would become, I think, unmanageable and, and not very useful. So it will be more a guide um, of availability than a true representation. And I think there was another question. Is there any... Is there another way to track hour totals and levels of awards for different level of hours completed. I'm not sure I understand the question, um, but you could, um, you could run your report for uh, different volunteer roles and you could give awards to uh, the referee who has the most volunteer hours or the ticket taker who has the most uh, volunteer hours. Um, um, and you can also add custom fields uh, to the volunteer um, activities. So if, it, if it's not as important how much time they're volunteering, and this is kind of a terrible example, but um, if you have volunteers who are coming into your office to stuff envelopes um, for mailing, and you want to track how many envelopes each volunteer stuffed, and you probably don't want to do that because people will feel really manipulated. Um, but say you did, um, you could add a custom field to the volunteer activity type because it is um, leveraging existing CiviCRM functionality um, and track that um, instead of ours. Okay. Um, one more question and then I think I'm going to jump back to this slide because we're getting close to the end of our allotment here. Um, how can I send email to people on the volunteer list so they know they've been signed up um, and then send them reminder emails? Um, I think what you're going to want to do there is, again, leverage um, existing functionality within Civi CRM. Um, and we're definitely open to talking about um, ways to make this better, but I didn't want to reinvent the wheel um, for functionality that already exists. So we, it may make sense to um, um, to make it more accessible within the context of a volunteer project. Um, but let's see. Um, I'm looking for. Um, looking for scheduled reminders. And I know I'm looking in the wrong place. Here we go. It's not just the internet that's slow, it's my brain. Um, scheduled reminders. So um, you can take an activity and you can select uh, the volunteer type and um, for people who are scheduled to volunteer, um, maybe you want to say um, one day before the activity time, um, send them uh, a message. Um, oh, uh, be careful about which type of recipient you choose here. Um, City Volunteer does um, activities kind of the opposite of how a lot of the activities are recorded in CiviCRM. So um, what makes sense to me is if you're, if someone is, is volunteering for um, an activity or, or some volunteer project, uh, they're, the, they're the assignee. Um, 
most of the time uh, your constituents are the targets of uh, an activity um, and uh, the assignee would be someone on your own team in your office. Uh, but in this case, they're, they're kind of surrogate staff uh, in a way. Um, so you want to make sure you send it to the activity assignees. Um, but there isn't a, there isn't a way to um, notify them like as you drag and drop them. Uh, and I think that's probably good um, because uh, you might drag and drop a few times before you get it right and you don't want to flood them with emails. I think we can go okay, ahead and skip it. Wanna... Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, no, I think we can go ahead and, and uh, skip this. We have about four minutes left. Um, okay. Let me go to towards the, the last few slides. Okay, if anyone has uh, a few extra minutes after we officially wrap up and wants to ask some questions about evaluating programs, uh, stick around and, and we'll answer those questions for you. Right. Um, I think I'm going to say the same thing for this slide. Um, there are some limitations to Civi Volunteer. Uh, a lot of folks don't like that it's event-based um, because they have more of like a recurring in-the-office volunteer setup. Um, so hang out um, if you want to talk about these issues too. I'm sorry we went a little over uh, the technical difficulties. Surely didn't help with that. Uh, so what's coming up is the Civi Volunteer 1.4 release. Um, Commendations, we gave you a quick overview of that. Skill specification um, where people can, you can define whichever skills you're interested in tracking and um, your volunteers can tell you how good they think they are at them. Um, we're also going to have a first pass at skill matching. I might be able to show you a partially working form of that if you want to hang out after we wrap up. Um, uh, so that you can assign people who have certain skills to certain roles. Um, we've made some improvements to the volunteer sign-up form. Um, you saw this kind of peripherally uh, in Civi Volunteer 1.3 and earlier. Uh, there's one volunteer profile form that you can use across all of the different volunteer opportunities. Um, so going forward, we actually allow you to select which profile you use. Um, so if you have multiple kinds of volunteer events with very different participants or questions that you need answers to, um, you, can, you can customize the questions accordingly. And um, I already showed you the volunteer interest form and that, um, that is the sort of thing that you can do yourself within Civi CRM, um, but it's nice for it to be kind of all bundled together. Um, so next steps for us are, um, we're doing a new round of development on Civi Volunteer uh, as soon as we wrap up this one. And um, the really good news about that is that we have, um, we have some matching funding. Um, so we're looking for partners to um, kind of join up with us. Um, we need to raise uh, $15,000 in order to uh, maximize um, the grant, but um, what's great about that is that um, your contributions or, or your, your, um, your dollar goes twice as far. Um, so if there's a Civi Volunteer tweak um, that you've wanted or even a Civi Volunteer major feature that's been on your radar, um, please talk to us about it. We are on a bit of a um, timeline to match this grant in time. So we're looking to have that all lined up by um, the end of March. And so there are some links here, um, which I, 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 you probably can't click um, <laughs> through the presentation here. We're, we're um, going to share the presentation with folks afterwards, so they'll be able to click on the link. Great. Um, so the roadmap um, shows you kind of where we're headed. Uh, it's still very open um, because this, the way open source works is um, whoever has the development power or the dollars to fund development power kind of dictates the, um, the direction that the project takes. And um, that's how we've gotten to where City Volunteer is so far. And uh, our, the funders of our first major round of development were 
you know, generous enough to share this with the community and make it open source. Um, so we're hoping to kind of continue to build on that. Um, so there's some more volunteer management resources here. These are more, um, well, Roshni could, could probably tell you a little bit more about these organizations, but if you're looking for help with um, the volunteer management process piece of volunteering management, of, of managing volunteers, uh, there's some good resources here. If you're if your um, processes are no good and, um, and you just don't have a good workflow, the software isn't going to solve that for you. The software just puts into code whatever your real world practices are. Um, so it's important to get those right before you start messing around with any software. Um, coming up in just a few months is CityCon Denver. Um, there's a, a little bit for everyone here. Um, there's a discovery session for folks who are new to Civi Volunteer. Um, there's a developer training um, for folks who want to get under the hood and maybe change the way Civi CRM or Civi Volunteer work and contribute that back. Um, user and administrators also. Uh, not everyone is a coder, but there's still a lot that you can learn about the system. Um, so. This year, for the first time, um, the conference is going to be in Denver. And um, so last slide here is uh, information for how you can connect with us after, um, after this webinar ends. And thank you so much for um, spending your valuable time with us. And um, I'm just going to leave this up for a few seconds so folks can jot down information before I pop back over to um, my web browser so I can answer any questions that have come up. Um, and um, we are pretty much out of time now, um, but I don't have to go anywhere. So if you can hang out, um, put your questions in the box there and uh, we'll kind of uh, roll back over what we didn't get to um, in the presentation. Thanks. Okay, so I'll just start um, answering questions here. Uh, can volunteers log in to update their own hours, which can then be moderated by an administrator? The answer is no. Um, we, um, we wanted to do that, but in the first uh, major round of development, we didn't have the budget for it, and the client who was funding the work, um, they had very strict requirements on um, the time being accurate, um, and they didn't have the budget for like a, an approval workflow for the hours. Um, so instead, uh, what we settled on was having a way for an administrator to log hours. Um, that is something that we get a lot of requests for and something that I would love to, uh, to see become part of this City Volunteer 2.0 um, fundraising effort. Um, awards tracking. Okay, so the question on awards tracking here, um, they want, for example, if someone volunteers 20 hours of volunteer time, um, can we incentivize um, volunteers by having like different levels uh, that you reach? Um, and uh, is there a place to make note and track hourly totals and awards received? Um, so there isn't anything too formal for that. Um, there is a, a reporting engine which we, we didn't really look at, um, which we can, we can look at if, if people want to see that. Um, it's just a standard CV CRM report. Um, and you can, um, you can just run the report monthly or run by different types. Um, and uh, one thing you could do maybe is uh, kind of the, the, the low budget solution would be to run a report and um, you know, for everyone who has 20 hours this year, give them a tag of um, you know, gold volunteer, and then you could run um, 
you know, periodically send out you know, a free t-shirt or, or whatever incentives you have to offer to anyone who's tagged in that way. Um, there is an interesting use case that I'd like to explore and that's um, using volunteer credit almost like a currency. Um, some organizations, so we deal, we've worked with some uh, public access uh, community television stations and um, a lot of them have uh, a requirement that folks uh, volunteer um, for other existing programs before they gain access to um, studio time of their own or if they volunteer um, so much they can trade in, so to speak, those hours for a discount on like a camera rental. Um, obviously that history needs to be tracked non-destructively so you don't want to say you know, Frank volunteered 20 hours and um, now we're going to take 10 of those hours away because he's um, getting a free camera rental. Um, we still want to know that Frank volunteered 20 hours, so we want to track um, the currency or the rewards separately from um, the hours, but also have them be related. Um, so that's an idea for something that we could do in the next phase and um, I think there would be a few groups that might be interested in that and any time that we have um, organizations you know, with common goals, it, it's better for everyone because no individual organization has to shoulder the burden of, of the cost. Are there any more questions? Just give folks a few seconds to, to type up uh, questions if they have them. Um, in the meantime, um, uh, feedback mechanisms for uh, volunteer projects. Um, so City Volunteer 1.4 will have a feedback mechanism in one direction um, where uh, volunteer coordinators can feedback on an individual's performance by you know, giving them a gold star, for example. Um, we don't have um, anything in the opposite direction, but I would encourage you to look at um, existing features in CIVI Volunteer for that. I'm sorry, in CIVI CRM for that. Um, because a, a CIVI CRM survey might be a good way to collect some of that information or um, if folks want that um, feedback but don't necessarily want it in their CRM. Um, you could use uh, Drupal Web Form or uh, Gravity Forms in WordPress or um, I think it's JForm in, uh, in Joomla to collect that information. Um, my bias is always towards keeping that sort of stuff in the CRM. Um, so I would probably try to do that with City Survey. Um, let me put up that contact slide again. And in case that's small, I'll, I'll just read it uh, for folks. Um, you can find me on Civi CRM uh, forums, IRC or Skype um, at Ginkgo, F-J-G. And Ginkgo is G-I-N-K-G-O. And uh, my email is frank at ginkgostreet.com. And um, Roshini's information is on here too. Uh, her Twitter handle is just her first name and you can reach her at uh, her first name at ginkgostreet.com. That's R-O-S-H-A-N-I. Um, okay, there's another question. Um, we have a lot of small events, each needing two to three volunteers. Volunteers offer to cover multiple events and the administrator needs to select which volunteers are accepted. Does the interface cover that? Um, right, so maybe what would work best for you is um, the 
defining your needs um, with none of the public checkboxes um, checked or maybe only some of them checked. Um, so folks will just sign up to say, um, you know, I'm flexible, I can help, use me. Um, and then in the assigned volunteers uh, interface here, so all of those people who sign up that way are going to show up um, on the left side here as available volunteers. Um, the available volunteers, that's pretty much synonymous with, um, with the, um, you know, I'm flexible. And um, so this way, uh, the coordinator or the moderator has the ability to um, individually approve um, people for specific roles. So, you know, I might get um, 20 people to sign up and I really, for example, in this event, I only need 12. So I can be, I can pick and choose um, who I want. Um, uh, also, it's worth uh, noticing these, these, uh, this little menu on the side here. So I can move um, myself uh, to a role. And if I, if I have someone, it doesn't make sense for this particular example because both of these things are happening at the same time. But if I want to sign someone up um, for a couple of things, um, then I can um, copy Frank into, into a couple of places here. Um, and I can also just delete someone from here. Uh, I think that answers your question. If, if it doesn't cover it, um, please uh, follow up or, or clarify um, in the question box there. And if anyone else has a question, uh, please go ahead. like it mostly covers it, but not quite. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take Myla's question next. Um, is there detail under each volunteer profile for a place to designate certifications? Um, um, certifications or approval? Actually, let's finish Aiden's question here before we change topics. Sorry. It um, doesn't seem to show that volunteer offered for events one and two and volunteer offered for event two only. Okay, I think I understand. Um, right, so this interface is um, for one event at a time or one volunteer opportunity at a time. Um, what I could do um, with folks who made a who volunteered themselves but weren't used is when I log the hours here, um, I could mark them as not required and that's a way to show that um, they volunteered, but we didn't have we didn't have a need for them. But yes, this interface is presently designed to manage just one project at a time. Um, if you have kind of a series of related um, projects, um, you uh, or or events that are that are related, um, so you can see the name of this event is youth soccer tournament. Um, we can make that whatever we like. Um, uh, but a tournament maybe doesn't um, last just one day. The events might be over various days. Um, and in some cases, I think it makes sense to, like if you have just regular office volunteers, um, you could just make the event be just a, a placeholder um, or, or like a container for your volunteer project. So you could call it um, you know, office hours, June 2014. Um, and 
um, then when you define your needs, you could say, so um, for game one, maybe we have a ticket taker, uh, we have 10 t ticket takers, but then um, the next day, we have another game at 10 a.m. Um, with all the same details here. And um, of course, it wouldn't be a proper soccer match without referees. Um, so we can do the same thing here. Um, so that is uh, maybe a, a workflow that will work for your organization. Um, OK, to answer the next question, um, is there detail under each volunteer profile for a place to designate certifications or designate approval of insurances when driving organization vehicles? So for that, I would um, recommend that you leverage the custom fields um, in CVCRM. And um, oops, that's not the screen I want. Um, so in the example that I showed you, I have a custom field um, for camera skill level. And um, I could add, um, it's just, I don't know what kind of certifications. We'll just say driving certification. Um, and um, we'll just make it free text since I don't really know anything about that. Um, and we can just go ahead and save that. And um, if it's the sort of question that we want to ask um, people to supply an answer for themselves, um, then we can go ahead and ask, add it to um, maybe the general inquiry form. Um, so you would do that by managing profiles and adding the driving certification. And um, so when we, Uh, when we put this form out for the public to um, you know, tell us they want to volunteer with us, they can put in um, whatever makes sense in the driving certification field. And if it's a, a field that you're interested in keeping private, um, then you just don't have to put it on the public form. You can leave it in the um, custom field there and just manage it on the back end. Um, let me give another couple seconds um, for Mila to, to feed back on that and see if I answered your question. And um, if not, I think um, for anyone who's interested, I can get uh, a little more technical and talk about um, the API for uh, if you want to extend um, how Civi Volunteer is working now. I know at least one person is interested in that topic. Okay, um, maybe I will just go ahead and pull up um, what I was going to show you. Um, so City uh, Volunteer introduces some new APIs as well. Um, 
And this is really probably only interesting um, to you if you uh, have some coding ability or have someone on your team um, who does uh, and you need to make just the slightest change to how um, City Volunteer works or maybe you want um, uh, maybe you want to create your own custom form uh, or maybe an interface that lists all of the volunteer opportunities that are available. So um, there are a few new APIs introduced here. Um, and again, uh, with the exception of volunteer need and volunteer project, all of this other stuff is core CVCRM in terms of the data storage. So um, a volunteer assignment is just a specific type of activity and a volunteer commendation is just a specific type of activity. Um, so we could just get a list of all of our volunteer projects. Um, and it looks like we have just one here. Um, and so uh, I can, I will probably really bore people if I start explaining what all of this junk means, but basically, um, at a high level, uh, this is volunteer project number one. It's related to a city serum event with an ID of three. And the target contact um, or the, the beneficiary uh, that we specified, it was uh, some legal group. Uh, their ID is number 50. And um, yes, this volunteer project is active. Um, and then we could do a couple more API lookups to get uh, what the needs are, um, and there are some other functions that I think um, maybe are not exposed through the API, um, but there are some uh, existing functions that you can use to get um, a lot more information out of here. Uh, and then you could use that to build a form or a listing of events. Um, I think Unless folks have more questions, um, we can wrap it up. We'll give you a, a few seconds to um, let me know what you're thinking. Uh, thanks, Leo and Aiden, for, for attending and for your time and attention. Um, yeah, please uh, do let me know if you have any more questions. Um, conversation can happen a lot faster if one person isn't typing, so we can uh, uh, move, move things along a little faster. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and get this, uh, this information up somewhere where folks can look at it. Uh, either the slides or the video or, or both. Um, and if you have any more questions, um, feel free to tweet at me or um, just send me an, an email and uh, we can talk about ideas for um, either how to implement um, CV CRM, uh, CV volunteer for your organization or how to make it more suitable for your organization if you're already using it, but it's you know only 75% of, of what you need. Thank you, everyone. This concludes uh, our session. Bye.